It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call shots. Holy shit, Todd. I need to decompress after this episode. Mm, my deck's still rock solid. I need to I need to go to one of those Twilight healing baths. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm, I'm surprised we didn't joke about that uh, during the episode. We, I was about to say, at, at what point did we have time to crack jokes, Todd? We didn't. That's exactly the point. <laughs> that was one balls-to-the-wall episode mm-hmm. of The Mandalorian. Holy shit. It was so good. So, okay, before we get into it, I should start the episode by saying, as as always, this is going to be very spoiler-filled. This is a spoiler-filled review of The Mandalorian Chapter 3. If you have not seen the episode yet, turn back now. You have been warned. We're going spoilers for the rest of this Mandalorian series. So come back after you've watched the episodes if you do not want to be spoiled. But God damn it. What a good episode. By mm. far, for me, the best episode yet. This is the way. Oh, this is the way, Todd. <laughs> oh, I don't even know how I want to... Where do I want to start? There's, I guess let's just... There's, oh. Let's just unpack the episode, I guess, Yeah. in our minds. So, it starts off, and we kind of knew that it was going to reach this point eventually, right? Because he has his bounty. It's time to turn it in, right? It's time to bring Yiddle back to the client now. And we we all knew this moment was coming, but I was like, the whole time, I'm like, is he really going to do it? You can't. It's like, we both, like, we don't want him to do it. You can't do it. Uh, Shit. And it's like, before they even, like, land back on that planet, you know, you got Yiddle being adorable. Being cute as hell. Playing with the little knob on the thruster. Absolutely adorable. Too cute. And I and you already know, like the second that that came up, I'm like, uh, writer brain ticks in. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, that's gonna be a plot device. Yeah, it's, cool. Uh, it definitely was. <laughs> so little little knob on the thruster there. He's being adorable, and I'm just like, well, you can't do it. You can't do it. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, he's gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, it's like as it's just like it keeps going deeper and deeper. It's like you see the payment. And you're like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> He it's he does it it happens I mean as on paper the way it was supposed to he delivers the child which by the way that is the official we all you know lovingly refer to it as Yiddle or Baby Yoda which has been like a controversial uh, controversial thing online but the official name of that character right now is the child mm-hmm. so when merchandise comes out of that character which according to what we've been reading actually they are planning on having merchandise for this character in time for the holidays but it will be labeled the child so anyway (laughs) we knew that it was gonna have to happen he was gonna have to deliver the child to the client and he was gonna get paid with like a shit ton of the best scar and that all happens and it broke my heart oh i dude i got i i got legitimately emotional it it just it hurt me because Jittel just like is just looking over at uh, the Mandalorian, and it's just like just and it just Jittel cried. He let out a little cry oh, as he. Fuck. Here, here's the thing that this episode is so good at, and and the reason why I'm like I'm so down for this director. What's her name? Deborah Chow. Yeah. Deborah Chow, who by the way is going to be spearheading the Obi Wan Kenobi series for Disney Plus. She directed this episode, and it's so clear that she's got such an eye for tension, because in that in those first scenes where he's walking Yiddle through oh, the yeah. town, yeah, and Yiddle's just like kind of taking in all the sights and all the bounty hunters around in the town and stuff like that, and it's like I feel like you can see like I feel like Yiddle Yiddle knew. In a way, you know? In a, in a way, he knew that something yeah. was wrong. He could yeah. sense it. Yeah. I mean, he could probably sense a legitimate disturbance in the Force at that point. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah, so he brings him in, yeah, and, and they, they, they take Yiddle from him, and Yiddle lets loose that cry. And I felt like... There was I a literally disturbance felt, in the forest. <laughs> I felt the crack form on my heart uh, surface. Yeah. Oh, it was so bad. I was like, no, no. And then he leaves, of course, and he brings the Baskar immediately to the Mandalorian clan, the underground Mandalorian clan, and instantly turns it into some armor. That is where we are introduced to one of the really cool things about this show, the thing that the show continues to do, and it really goes balls deep with it in this episode, is the study on the Mandalorian's culture Mm -hmm. and the way they handle business. And we're introduced to this new character. The, these characters are not named in the show. They're kind of like named off of the show and name dropped in the credits and stuff like that. But he's like a heavy Mandalorian infantry and kind of like calls him out, right? Because he's like, look, this motherfucker, the, the Empire is responsible for what they call the Great Purge. We know to be like basically the, the wiping out of most of the, of the Mandalorians. Yeah. yeah which I'm sure we're going to be seeing more and more of as the show goes on. And it's kind of funny, like the way that this show synergizes with other upcoming stuff is Mm. really interesting because we're pretty sure that the new season of Clone Wars that's coming in February is going to be on the Siege of Mandalore, right? Yeah, is going to be tackling that stuff. So yeah, that'll be interesting. And, And it seems like there's a lot of like synergy there. But so yeah, all of the Baskar that he's that he's brought is all stamped with the Imperial mm. smelting seal. And he takes issue with that. He's like, look, this motherfucker is is in bed with the enemy, essentially. Mm-hmm. And they, they get into a little bit of a little bit of fisticuffs. And it's and you know, long story short, his his armor is assembled. And it's it's clean. I think so I think the only thing he's missing armor wise is his legs. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So he he's got the the armor, the clean like like pure like chrome armor, basically. You know where you know where I think he's gonna get his legs? Where? Carl Weathers' character. Think so? He's that motherfucker's got some got some of that shit too. That metal. That's true. Yeah, he does have two pieces of it, and that that comes into play. So. Really, really interesting. Uh, they, you know, he gets gets the armor, crafts the suit, and everything like that. And it's one of the things that I found interesting because there's actually a lot to unpack in that little scene there in the underground place with the armor. Yeah, the moment where the Mandalorian is talking about Yiddle and calls it an enemy mm-hmm. who saved him in battle. Yeah, right. That was so interesting to me that the Mandalorian had to like had to justify that in his own mind mm-hmm. by thinking of him as an enemy. Yeah. Or is that something that is innate in his mindset? Everybody that, is an enemy. That that's that's real shit. I wonder if that that probably is how how it is though. That how I feel like that's how they have to be in a way. Everybody is an enemy and for the first time when he actually said that he realized this is the first time i've ever felt like something was not my enemy well, even even throughout the episode like even before like that scene it's like he's, he's he's he was asking like what are you what are you planning with it like what are you planning with Gittle, essentially yeah like, there was he cared from the from the moment they got on that pl- you know back on the planet yeah but yeah, and uh, then you know, fucking Warner Herzog's characters like how uncharacteristic the fucking, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, basically saying like you're a bounty hunter, like, and that's that's an interesting thing with the title of this episode. We were talking. The title of this episode is the sin, mm-hmm. and it's like, it's a really cool kind of like double meaning where when the episode starts, the first half of the episode or whatever, you're like, oh fuck, this like. This deplorable son of a bitch, he's actually going to do it. He's going to give Yiddle to the bad guys. No. <laughs> you know? And then it becomes obvious that the sin is him going against the code of the Bounty Hunters Guild. Mm-hmm. And him breaking everything that... Basically uprooting everything that his life has been at current for the sake of Yiddle. Yep. 
for the sake of going in and saving him. And oh boy, does he! Oh Lord, does, does he, he does. ever? He so basically he goes to Carl Weathers' character, mm-hmm. and he's like, he's like, yo, like I did it. I need another job. I need to get my basically. I need to get my mind off of mm-hmm. all this. Give me another job. Send me as far away as possible. That's what I say. He straight up even said, "The further, the better." Yeah. yeah, and I think he even he sends him after like a Mon Calamari. Yeah, like uh, like a politician's son or something like that, who like was skipped bail, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm going far away, basically." And like Carl Weathers' character was even telling him, "Like, look," and and that's another cool thing we learned a little bit about the rules of the guild like you don't ask questions you don't with when it comes to the bounty hunters guild you do the job and you don't ask questions and you don't follow up and you it's it's all about payment you don't care right that's that is implicit to their rules so when he asks carl weather's character like what what are, what are they going to do with it he's like don't know didn't ask it's against the rules so i thought that was also interesting So, he takes the puck for the Mon Calamari thing, goes to sit in the cockpit of his of his ship, and take off. Yeah, I knew it was gonna happen. I saw him reach for it. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I I see him go to like to like grab for the thruster, and I was like, oh, they're gonna go for one of these. He he, of course he touches, you know, sees where the knob was that Yiddle took off. And that was when the that was when the flip got switched, Todd. Mm-hmm. That was when that switch got flipped. He he fucking he was like, nope, fuck this, disengage. We're going in and we're getting Yiddle. And man, what a great scene! Oh, it's so good. He he storms back into the town, decked out in his new armor. Fucking he he approaches the area and sort of like confirms that they're doing some vile shit with him. And this is another interesting thing. So he's got sort of this like sonar binocular thing where he can actually hear what they're saying yeah, through that was, the walls. That was yeah, that was cool. And they were talking about Werner Herzog's character was talking about like extracting like extracting something from Yiddle. Like and then basically extracting getting rid the of the midichlor. That's what I was thinking. I, I think he said extracting the necessary material. I think is what he said. I, I, I'm wondering. Are they uh, talking about yeah the what are, what are those, the midichlorians or whatever the fuck? Yeah, is he talking about midichlorians? Are uh, they? That that's that's the interesting that's an interesting implication. Are they trying to extract midichlorians scientifically, and trying to clone the actual midichlorians themselves to make? To, to literally create Force-sensitive beings. Mm-hmm. That could be interesting. Could they be trying to weaponize midichlorians? I don't know. So that's interesting. But either way, he, he goes, he, he sort of confirms that they're up to some vile shit. He goes to the alleyway and sees that they have Yiddle's crib in the dumpster. And, and the, even at that moment right there, I was just like, oh, hell no. Mm-hmm. It's time to whoop some ass. It's like beat their motherfucking asses. It's time to whoop some monkey ass, bro. <laughs> and that's exactly what he does. I should also say, I forgot to mention one of the things. So they they get on the topic of the, the Mandalorian has not had a signet yet. Mm-hmm. And it's normally earned from what we gather by a great battle that they have. Yeah. And he had the great battle with the Myhorn in episode two. And they were like, okay, that's going to be your signet. And that's how he gets on the topic of like, no, it wasn't really me. It wasn't an honorable kill. My enemy helped me kill it, blah, blah, blah. But so what she does instead is she says, okay, then we're going to give you the whistling birds. They're scarce. Use them sparingly. But it's essentially a weaponized, like some mini weaponized like rockets, Mm -hmm. like rocket darts. Similar to what like Iron Man has. Yeah. And uh, and he has those loaded into his sort of like wrist gauntlets, and those come into play later in the episode. And man, what a cool sequence when he's just going through just like raining hell and just mm-hmm. systematically, like you said, going horror movie on their asses, <laughs> <laughs> going through and retrieving Yiddle. <laughs> I found it interesting the reaction when he finally gets into the sort of like operating room. 
and you can see the Imperial droid like closing in, like about to insert the needle, basically. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he shoots it, obviously. But then the doctor is pleading for his life, and if I'm not mistaken, doesn't he say, "Don't hurt it"? Yeah. He was more worried about Yiddle. Yeah. Well, he he, he wanted he he didn't look like, as it was uh the other mother it was the older guy. I forget, I forget do we, has that character been named or no? I don't even think he has been. I just I just the actor's name is Werner Herzog, yeah. so <laughs> So yeah, his his character is uh he's the one that wanted it dead. Right. The doctor he said there, multiple times. The, yeah, yeah, the doctor is wanted it alive the entire time. So yeah, I'm not, right. I wasn't surprised. I mean, I don't know why he thought that Buddy was going to kill him, but, but yeah. He's he's like don't hurt it, don't hurt it. Like even pleading for Yiddle's life before his own, which yeah. I found interesting. Because it seems like while Werner Herzog's character is like, he's very like pragmatic. He's very like, he's he's working for the Empire. He wants the midichlorians. He wants the necessary material, and then throw Yiddle's fucking body in the dumpster, basically. Mm-hmm. Like get rid of it after you're done with it, basically. And this doctor, doctor, I think his name is Doctor Pershing. After you, know, he he is very much after like. Yiddle himself, like he he actually cares about Yiddle's health and well being. The first thing he does when the Mandalorian brings him in mm-hmm. is he makes sure he's healthy. Yeah, scans him and he's like very healthy. Right. Yeah. So, so it seems like he's very actually concerned about Yiddle's well being, and I wonder if that's going to come into play because, as we notated, I think in the last episode of Shots, he has that Kaminoan cloning facility yes. patch. Mm-hmm. Right. So I wonder if like. His motives are, I want to clone more of Yoda's species versus the Empire's motives, which are, no, I just want the midichlorians. Are we, are we, are we just fully just going with that, that route? That's, I mean, until we know more, obviously, we're just speculating. I, that's, that's kind of the fun thing about doing these episode by episode is because we don't know where it's going. So I think we just kind of have to speculate uh, like based on what we know. It's the only thing that comes to mind, though, when they say, like, the material. What else could it be? I, I, I really don't know what else they could be referring to. It's got to be... He's got to be talking about extracting midichlorians from his body. So... And, and we already know that Yoda, of course, had an extremely high midichlorian count. That was actually the first thing. If you even go back to episode mm-hmm. one, that was, they're like, Anakin's yeah. got more midichlorians than even Master Yoda, who at the time had the most midichlorians yeah, on record. Because I think, if I remember correctly, it was like over 20,000 for Anakin. Something so, like that, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's 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 going to be interesting to see where that goes, and I wonder if those are questions that are even going to be answered. Anyway, long story short, Mandalorian does rescue Yiddle through a series of badass events, and we get that great scene where all of a sudden all the fobs are going on. Oh, the tension, dude. dude! The tension of that, like it was just like you're just like, oh shit. We get another shot of that bar where the Bounty Hunters Guild operates out of. And we just see every last one of them. Even Grief Karga. Even Carl Weathers' character. Like, his his fob is going off, too. Everybody is now after the Mandalorian, dude. So, he comes back out. He's trying to head to the ship. And, of course, the, the whole fucking town's after him, bro. Mm-hmm. He is so severely outnumbered. And he holds his own for a long damn time. Mm-hmm. A long damn time, and and like Carl Weathers' character is trying to like reason with him. He's like, "Look, I, I found it interesting how like the the sort of like politics and the rules of the bounty hunters guild meant that like even though he seemed so friendly and almost like halfway fatherly to the Mandalorian in the first two episodes, he made that turn real quick. Mm-hmm. The second that the Mandalorian committed the sin." In the eyes of the Bounty Hunters Guild, he was he, he was going to kill him. Mm-hmm. He was ready to kill him. Mm-hmm. And I think the Mandalorian even realized that because there's a moment where Carl Weathers is like, he's like, put you know, put the child like like in the speeder, and maybe I'll let you go, and not, maybe I'll let you leave. And he knew that he wasn't going to walk out mm-hmm. of there alive. Mm-hmm. And he has that moment even where he he's looking down at Yiddle in the speeder and Yiddle like opens his eyes mm-hmm. and, and that's, he's just like, yeah, fuck this. And then it just goes guns blazing. And it's such, it's such a great, this, this 
episode has got has got it all. It's got great tension. It's got great action set pieces. It delves into the culture of the Mandalorians. It delves into the world building aspects of the Bounty Hunters Guild. It's so good. Like I thought everything about this episode was perfect. Like I loved mm. it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've been loving the show as is, but no, this was this the episode. Was, yeah, this was easily easily the best episode so far. I mean, this episode was stratospheric. Like the the show has been great up until this point, of course, but this episode I was like, "Wow." And it ends with such a bang, of course. You know, there's there's a bunch, you know, like I said, the Mandalorian holds his own for a long time. Like, he, he holds his own against all the Bounty Hunters Guild and for a long time. I think we both had this thought in the back of our mind, and it happened. And it was yes. great. Yes. It was so good. Dude, like, the, there's, there's you see, like, rockets being fired uh-huh. from, from the sky, basically. And you're like, oh, shit. Like, the cavalry's here. And then we get this just beautiful shot coming up over the archway several dozens of Mandalorians from his underground clan oh. jetpacks lit firing upon all the bounty hunters guild and oh my god it was so good <laughs> it was so fucking good and it made me realize as we're watching it I was like I was like oh that's right like my boy doesn't have yeah, his own jetpack I, I said this I was like yeah I, I, it's at this at this point I realized that man does not yeah. have a jetpack and he even says at the very end, he's like, I got to get me one of those. So I, I hope we see him get a jetpack by the end of the series. Yeah. But man. And then, yeah, that same character that was that he was kind of scrapping with yeah. earlier, the character who had a beef with him about working for the Empire, came up to him. You know, this is the way. The Mandalorian said, like, like yo, like, you, you guys are, you are going to have to relocate at this point. Mm-hmm. This this is all or nothing, and what what I loved is just like the the clan is so like the togetherness of it all. Yeah, they're willing to put that all out there to help their brother, and even though he is a foundling, and even though he did do work for the Empire with the bounty and everything like that, like the foundlings are the future. This is the way. Oh, I love it! I love it! I love I just, it! I love I, it! I was it's like I feel like my stupid ass is gonna be like, I have spoken. This is the way. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many quotable things right yeah and it's it's uh. worth noting by the way that i think john favreau is writing all of these episodes so like i mean really good writing for that stuff really cool i'm i'm curious how much further we're gonna get because by the way we know about actors and characters that are in this show that have still not appeared now yeah. granted we're only on episode three we're not even halfway through the first season yet, so we have to appreciate that. But we know about characters like Giancarlo Esposito is in this show. He hasn't appeared yet. There's a character called Cara Dune who has like a Black Series like action figure. She hasn't even appeared yet. So I'm curious. I'm sort of wondering if Giancarlo Esposito's character is going to be the head of the Bounty Hunters Guild. Because that's a big question that I've got at this point now. Now that we're learning a little bit more about the guild, it's like, hey, like, where is it? Like, where is this <laughs> guild headquartered? Who's in charge of it? So that's going to be interesting. Of course, I'd be remiss not to mention that it, during the scene while the armor was being crafted, we had another flashback. We have to shout this out, right? Oh, of course. And I, I think we both, again, we both had the same thought. the same thought at the end of it. Yes. They, it's basically, you know, it's shot, it's showing what we've already seen a little bit of before, where we're seeing, like, Mandalore being destroyed. Well, the way it seems like they're doing it is, like, I feel like every time we get this flashback, we're going to see it the same way, it's just something gets added on. Right. Just adding a little bit more. Right. We're seeing, like, the, the Separatist battle droids. Yep. Like, from the Clone Wars era. Oh, so cool. But yeah, so we we've seen, like you said, it's and it's the same thing that we always saw of him as a kid being kind of stashed away, and then we get that last shot where the door opens and, it, and we it, see the battle droid bearing yeah. down on him, and that's where that's where it ends right there. 
but it's the way it's shot. Uh, the first thing I said is like, and now when we see it again, saber going right through it. Yes. Let's go. Yes. But I already, I, it's like if I'm not if if I'm wrong, which no, I, dude. Yeah, it's that's the only way it can happen. That's gotta be that. That's gotta be it. I I really think that as we get like further in with his backstory, and there have been a lot of rumors about you know is that gonna be is this gonna be our first you know, kind of tying into the Obi Wan series? Are we gonna see Obi Wan save him and stuff like that? That'd be so fucking cool. I I might cry if I see that. Dude, I, I'm I'm gonna cream my pants. If if that actually happens, and we actually see Ewan McGregor as Obi Wan save the young Mandalorian, I think that, that might actually elicit a tear from my eye. It actually might. So. I I saw a poll. Who do you? Uh, what's like? What's the more more iconic Obi Wan? It's like Ewan McGregor, Guinness, and then it's like it's funny as they didn't even have his fucking name. It was just Clone Wars. <laughs> oh, James Arnold Taylor. <laughs> yeah. James Arnold Taylor's great. I know, but I just thought it was funny. Because it was just like, Dad, the band has a name. <laughs> They're missing the guy who does his voice in Rebels. Oh, yeah. I, I don't remember his name. I have his autograph. It's I think it's Steven something. I feel I feel bad for not remembering his name. But I have his autograph, and he's he's a really, really nice guy. And um, <laughs> he, he does like a spot-on Alec Guinness impression. Yeah. But uh, anyway, but I digress. I can't wait to see more... The, the the waits the week long waits between these episodes are are just getting harder and harder, <laughs> especially after this one. Oh, Holy Lord. moly! I'm just ready for more. My dick is rock solid. <laughs> anyway, I think that's about all I can say about this one. Although, but before we end, I just I just want to just want to shout out. I'm gl- I'm glad that Yiddle got his toy at the end. Oh my God! Yes, I actually. <laughs> <laughs> He, he earned it. And if anybody from Hasbro is listening, I physically need a Black Series Mandalorian with his full gear, with Yiddle as an accessory. Just him holding him in his arm. Just him it. bundled up holding. I need that on my shelf. Anyway, that's all I got, Todd. You got anything else you want to add? I think that's about it, man. We'll catch you folks next week for another episode of The Mandalorian. Bye. See ya. Hey there, thanks for checking out another fantastic Nerd Bourbon video. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, be sure to go ahead and subscribe, leave us a like, drop us a nice comment, or I guess a a mean one if that's that's your prerogative. But uh, until next time, get dunked on.